Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to another timeless pick a card reading. Today's pick a card reading is what message will you receive from the Bhagavad Gita? And as you can see, the top cards are all drawn from the Bhagavad Gita. And if you can't read what's here, that says immovable Himalayas, that says protection, and that says great souls there. And today, because I'm in the office, we do have objects and we've got this lovely black... Now this would be black obsidian, I think. It's not onyx, it's black obsidian. We've got rose quartz here and we've got... Now I've got the name of this on my screen. It's called Turmal... Turmal... Okay, I can never say this. Turmalinated quartz. Turmal turmalinated quartz. I really struggle with this name but this is a really great um, crystal actually. Uh, it's all about journeying, all that kind of thing and rose quartz as we all know this is all about love. Interestingly I put this one here I, I didn't think what I was doing but that word there says protection. These could be the other way around because that is the stone of protection uh, right here, which is black obsidian. This is very much the stone of love. We have immovable Himalayas here. You know, perhaps what's immovable in our lives is actually love. So there we go. So this time you've got some things to think about and choose from. And of course, we've got our song lyrics as usual in the jar here. So as always, I look forward to seeing you in your reading. All right, so if you chose group number one, then you are in the right place. You've chosen this lovely black um, obsidian crystal, which I somehow managed to scratch. So <laughs> just put that there. There we go. Let's see what cards have come through for you. Now, as with all of my readings, please take on board what resonates and discard what doesn't not every message will be for you these are general readings a lot of people are viewing these so see what messages are for you and the reason I don't talk through the cards as I bring them out one by one is because I want you to see what's coming into your intuition okay so as we look here at beautiful Lord Vishnu see what pops into your mind Okay, we've got this lovely card, Woman Holding a Heart, number 44. I see these are not all fitting on the screen, <laughs> okay. I'll try and, there we go, that's not bad. Rock, endurance, isn't that stunning? Put that there, I think that works. Can tell that's a heart. For Tarot, you have got the Page of Wands upright. Oh, there's a lot of reflection on that. Doesn't matter. We know it's the Page of Wands. So I'll bring it up as well as we talk about it. We've got the Moon in reverse. We've got the Ten of Pentacles in reverse as well. And for my own Vedic cards, I hand draw these. <laughs> We've got, aha, Rahu in the ninth house. Okay. So that's Rahu the North Node. Let's take a look and see what all this is about. Oh, I can put that there. That works quite well, actually. Oh, you can't quite see it. Well, hold on. Make it so that you can see it. There we go. That works. Okay, so what do we have here? I remember as I was going through the cards briefly earlier this morning, there is quite an obvious message coming straight away. And that is that you're being asked to endure something. You know, you've, you've got to be like a rock at this time. 
And I remember looking at these two in particular, thinking that, well, these two are kind of saying the same thing. <laughs> Immovable Himalayas, you know, the Himalayas are made up of rock, and rock takes thousands of years to create. A rock doesn't happen overnight. So we've got rock kind of coming in twice, this message of endurance, this message of you being able to go the distance. Okay, little car horn there, interesting. Let's see if we can work that in. Because I haven't heard a horn all morning. There's also a dog barking, I don't know if you can hear that. So things are quite noisy as I'm talking about this, as I'm talking about you needing to endure something. I also looked at these two cards with this. I notice that all of these three are kind of going together. Where is this endurance needed? I would say it's in your love life. And it kind of feels like you need to hang in there for someone or you need to wait for someone. And it feels like you could be waiting a very long time. But do I believe it'll be worth the wait? I do, I, I do think. Whatever it is you're waiting for, I think it's going to be worth the wait. Uh, and it is in relation to love life. So if you're in a relationship, maybe you are having to be a rock of support for someone at this time. So it could be that. But I, I do get a sense of waiting. And I do get a sense that if, so if you're single, you're definitely waiting for that right person. You could be waiting a while. Okay, and that's not a bad thing, because what are you doing in the meantime? What are you doing while you are waiting? Well, you're doing this. You're getting busy. <laughs> you are going to be, and I, I took this ninth house as being fortune. You're going to be building your fortune. You're going to be building your life regardless. Okay, so maybe this person hasn't showed up as yet. Maybe you're waiting but while you are waiting, you're creating, you're building the next level up of your empire, of your kingdom. And that's what you're busy doing. And it's going to take courage. It's going to take work. It's going to take effort. You're going to have to be hands-on. But it feels like you've got that side of things where Ketu is here. You've, you've got that. What you need to do is... Work smart. You know, this is definitely a thing of working smart, working hard. Okay, that's another thing about the rock endurance message here. There is going to be some hard work ahead uh, in you building that next level up in your life. Why am I saying next level up? I'm saying that very much because there's a page here. So this is... And it's of wands, this is fire. And, you know, we're in a firehouse here, right? So, this is that next level. You're going to use fire energy, it's creativity. This type of fire is a very much a leadership type fire. So, you building that next level up in your life, that next platform, that next place where you want to go, where you want to share, you want to share that with someone. Okay, whoop, hang on. <laughs> there we go. You want to share that with someone. Okay, and you will be able to. But it's going to take time and effort. It's very Saturnian, these two here. These, uh, the immovable too many things going on here hold on <laughs> and we'll see what song lyrics come through for you as well it's amazing i don't know if you can hear that dog barking but he's been quiet all morning and just now it's really piped up so these are kind of saturnian energies here this this rock that takes time to build but when you build it it's going to be amazing. I think this is also a bit of an analogy for that next level up in your life, what you are building. It's the kind of thing that once you get there, you won't ever need to go back to the previous platforms or the previous steps that you have taken to get 
to this place that you want to be let's I'll, I'll go through these two as well so so yeah I do think you you're just being required to build that next level up that next platform fire energy creativity here what's currently stopping you right now is there's some blockage in your intuition basically uh, that's all I'm seeing and I don't think it's anything major I think it's the kind of thing that you can probably you can probably make this upright that you know your intuition is is flowing better you can do that by being more creative tapping into your creative energy expressing yourself and this doesn't need to be to any particular person I think this is just it's just creativity and it could be this kind of creativity of you building up that next layer that next platform that next place where you want to be it's it's quite nice energy here I know with group one I think the last couple of times with group one if you're a regular here to group one it has been about love life but it all it does feel like someone or some old dynamic has gone uh, and you're getting ready to build a new so I think I mean let's have that in the upright position let's say that you are going to commit to you on your own building your next level up in life because page of wands page it's a new level right you're a kid again in some realm and I'm going to say that that's going to be in like let's say it's a maybe it's a it's a business that you're starting or maybe it's part of your work and you're going to skill up you're going to learn some new skill or you're going to add something or you're going to you're expanding the kingdom it's something new it's something new and fresh and young and that's where you need to put your energy and I think if you do that this will be upright your intuition will be very clear uh, if you do that so that's going to be fantastic once you do that I think manifestation it's currently in its upside down position once you do that work with your intuition being more creative you know creating the future all that kind of thing this this is just going to come upright you just all it is here with this group really it's just a matter of putting your focus on the future on creating the new on your own okay leave behind um, you'll manifest this you'll manifest the love that you want it will come and if you're in a relationship hang in there okay I don't think you need to do too much in the relationship I think you might need to be a rock for somebody and that's probably about it your attention is really needed in this place of leadership creating the next level up in your kingdom that's that's really all that's needed so let's take a look at what song lyric comes through for you let's see <laughs> I always love doing this bit who knows what it's going to be let's see okay this one let's see how this fits with group number one oh that is amazing <gasps> This is so good. This is really, really, really good. Wow. Gosh, the angels are on fire today. All the doors I closed one time will open up again. I'll be back in the high life again. All the eyes that watched me once will smile and take me in. Back in the high life again. Steve Winwood. This is a really great song. And this is really where you need to go. If you feel like you're coming out of a time where things things are closed and maybe things have been quite tough here with all this immovable energy and this rock-like energy you might be coming out of something that's a bit tough but whatever it is that you feel like maybe you've left behind you've moved on from it's all going to open up again 
and you're going to be back in the high life again back in a higher realm you see we've got this page of wands here that's this that's the new layer the new level of life that you're meant to create for yourself and it's it's a, it feels like a solo thing it feels like so you might be as well in a place where you know things are a bit um closed dark you're wondering okay what's that next thing and that's that that was this in the reverse remember we had that in the reverse you might have and that and that it could be the end of a relationship i know with group one we've been talking about that a little bit you don't have to have watched past readings um but that has been a bit of an ongoing theme but look at this i think you've through through this song lyric anyway it's definitely saying that you're going to be back back in that high life again it's a really lovely song if you get the chance to listen then do check that out but group one thank you so much what i'm going to do as well is i'm going to leave a link to the verse uh, of this in the description below you'll be able to click on that and read what the exact verse is it is chapter 10 verse 25 for those of you who have your own copy all right well thank you so much group one leave me a comment in the comments below let me know how you got on with this reading and i look forward to seeing you next time hi there group number two if you chose group number two then you are in the right place that's the lovely rose quartz crystal here which is so nice as I mentioned in the intro, that could have been for group one as well. But interestingly, you know, the protection stone for group one could be here. But you got rose quartz. Fascinating. All right, let's go through the cards one by one. And as with any of my readings, be sure to check in with your intuition. See what the symbolism is saying to you. Uh... You know, these readings are general, so take on board what resonates and discard what doesn't. Oh yes, I love this card. Look at that, number eight, indecision. I've never drawn this one before. That's a great one. Looks kind of mysterious, doesn't it? Mountain, clarity. It's another card I've never drawn before. I love it. So beautiful. Queen of Wands, upright. It's this really annoying shadow. It doesn't matter. You know it's the Queen of Wands. <laughs> And for Tarot, we've got the Seven of Pentacles in reverse. More Tarot, I should say, because this is Tarot as well. And we've got Temperance in reverse. And from my hand-drawn astrology deck that I put together, aha, you've got Venus in the Eighth House. Cool. Oh yes, I'm remembering you, group two. I was looking at this in the morning and I was really impressed by these cards. It's very interesting because as I kept looking at each card, I kept feeling like I keep running into another mystery. There's a lot of mystery in here. There's a lot of um, unknown. There's a lot of unknown in here. One of the things, whoops, one of the things that jumped out at me when I was looking this morning was, was jealousy, weirdly. I wonder how I'm going to get to that. How, <laughs> because I did look at these one by one. The first thing that I really noticed was, so we've got protection here. So you are being protected. That is for sure. No doubt. Uh, I do believe that's Lord Vishnu in the middle. I think one of you, I drew this one time many, many weeks ago and somebody did tell me the story 
of this scene, which I was supposed to ask my mum about today, but I never did. Let's see, it says here, so we've got chapter 9, verse 22. It says, for those who worship me with devotion, meditating on my transcendental form, I carry what they lack and preserve what they have, both materially and spiritually. Beautiful. I'm going to put a link to this, chapter 9, verse 22, or if you've got your own Bhagavad Gita, you can look it up. I did read what was there, and it was quite beautiful. It's very much about surrender. It's very much about the fact that if you ask for the help, God will give it to you. But you, you, do, you do have to ask. And if you're very independent and think that you as a small, limited human, can solve absolutely everything. You might find life a little bit difficult. That's what I read into the link that I'll put in the description below. So if you want to read more, you can. So there's that message coming through there. But when I started looking at these things, I thought, well, for a start, I think we're dealing with work. So see, I'm jumping around everywhere because I've got too many things to talk about. So we are dealing with work. We've got the Seven of Pentacles in reverse here. I'm not getting any sort of love vibe or that this is to do with love. I'm getting that this is very much to do with work. When this is in its upright position, one of the ways of reading this is that, yes, you've been working very hard and that you take a pause and you're assessing. You're assessing, okay, Am I happy doing this? Do I want to keep putting my energy into this? You know, I, I like what I see, but do I want to keep going or do I want to do something different? So when it's in its reversed position, I mean, one way of seeing this is it could be impatience, um, that instead of doing that assessment, there might be an impatience that's going on. There was also this card in the reverse position, which can be a card of extremes when it's upside down. When it's upright, this can very much be about balance uh, and about finding the right balance. I'm pretty sure in traditional decks, she's putting, um, she's got two cups of, of water and some people read it as being alchemy as well. Uh, but yeah, definitely balance and in its reverse extremes. So at the moment you might be, there could be a frustration with work. Uh, so you're not assessing, which you could be doing. Maybe that maybe it's more frustration. There is some frustration here, but to me that this is definitely giving me a work vibe here, which brought me to jealousy. Now I know I have brought on the jealousy thing, brought up the jealousy thing earlier just quickly that was very much because of this that was because of venus in the eighth i thought okay i feel like there's someone who might be jealous of you in the workplace yeah let's look at these two together so that's venus in the eighth hidden this can also be hidden things um i don't know there's a couple of things popping into my mind it could be hidden passion as well so maybe you've got a hidden passion that you actually want to be doing something other than what you're doing. There's that. There's also jealousy because you are this queen of wands. Okay, so you are this fiery go-getter person who's got it all together. It doesn't matter if you're male or female. It doesn't matter at all. Uh, this is We're just looking at the feminine energy within you. And it's on fire. <laughs> okay, it's great. It's really, really, really good. There's some part of you that's raring to go, that's wanting to be creative, that's wanting to get on and do things. But I, yeah, there are some blockages, there's some frustration here. So let's keep taking a look because we've got these two which I haven't really talked about. So we've got indecision. And again, I think this is where, so we've got the number eight here. And that's a Scorpio type number, isn't it? Uh, indecision, yeah. And this was mysterious to me. This was where I couldn't quite pin it or nail it or say in a definitive way. I mean, it's indecision, right? So I'm definitely tapping into that energy that, 
yeah, I mean, which way are you supposed to go? It's this part of you that knows. There is a part of you that knows the answer, 100%. It's this queen of wands, you in your creative element part of you. It knows. It knows what to choose. You don't know what to choose at times, but there's a part of you, a big part of you that does. And this was interesting as well. The clarity and the mountain. Oh, hang on, I'm just going to move this stool because... Ah, oh, that's much better. Okay, so we've got clarity and mountain. Another thing I thought that this young lady, she's at the top of a mountain and she has the ability to see everything, yet she's asleep. So that is linking in here with this. There's some part of you that's asleep in some way, in some aspect. Well, we've all been asleep. I know I've been massively asleep <laughs> in my life, like in the past, you know, and I feel like I'm waking up now. But uh, I've definitely, I know what it is to be asleep and I know what it is to have blind spots. And I know what it is to not see. So there is something here that perhaps you're not seeing, um, you might be asleep to. The other thing is, I mean, this is just popping into my mind as well. This sleep could be necessary. It could be part of your protection, you being protected, so that you can get on and be this queen of wands and do what it is that you need to do. So being asleep is not always a bad thing, okay? I know it gets a bad rap in modern culture these days like this woke and asleep and all this kind of thing but honestly <laughs> sometimes being asleep is actually the better thing let's take a look and see what song comes through for you quite a few interesting kind of scattered things in here but hopefully i've woven that into some form of something or other <laughs> today I do feel the energy changes when I'm in the office. I prefer being out and about. I wanted to go out today, but I just don't have the time. All right, this one's coming through. Hmm. Let's see what the song lyric is. The last one I drew is really good. Let's see what the, this one is for you. Oh, wow. Interesting. Live High by Jason Mraz. Hang on. Just take it easy and celebrate the malleable reality. You see, nothing is ever as it seems. Yeah, this life is but a dream. Wow, another mystery. This is what I felt today earlier. When I was going through this spread, I just fit, felt like I keep coming upon mystery, upon mystery, upon mystery, upon mystery. So Venus in the eighth was, was very mysterious for me. These, this set of three, I mean, that's obvious. You're protected, okay? So don't, don't worry. That's a mystery. That's a bit of a mystery there too. And I think this stuff with work, I think this is the message. Just take it easy and celebrate the malleable reality. You see, nothing is ever as it seems. Yeah, this life is but a dream. Look at that, and she's asleep. This is perfect. Wow. Yeah. And see, that's what, what I was saying about being asleep or having a blind spot is sometimes a really good thing. That can be a form of protection, weirdly, and, and can allow you to just get on and be creative and do your thing, regardless of perhaps maybe what chaos is around you. Amazing. Well, group two, I'm gonna I'm gonna end the reading there. This has been so good. I mean we could just we keep drawing cards on all this and probably keep coming up with more mysteries each time. I love this one. Especially this. I feel like, see, I'm not even worried about this. There might be something where you're indecisive. But this was something that I was trained in soul coaching. The big thing I was trained there by Denise Lynn was Everyone has their own answers within them. And that's so true. You've 
got all the answers you need within you, always, and you can access that, always, yourself. Sometimes it's fun to work with someone, sometimes it's fun to engage in a reading like this and, and stuff like that, because that can help sharpen uh, your, you know, ability to, to see. But this, I, yeah, even though there's such a deep mystery here, I don't feel any worry energy or any, um, any reason to be afraid. It's, it's generally feeling pretty good. I think the thing you need to do is, is what's in here. <laughs> Just take it easy. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's it, that's it. Uh, look at that. That's this. That will bring this upright. And I think, and so there's something where you've been extreme. What you need is balance. Take it easy. When you find the balance, I think you'll be able to really accurately pause and really assess uh, what it is that you want to do next. So group two, that is your reading for today. I hope this has been a good reading for you. Let me know in the comments below and I look forward to seeing you next time. Hi there group number three. If you chose group number three, you are in the right place. This lovely, okay, I'm going to try and say it. Tur turmal turmalinated, turmalinated. There we go. I did it. Turmalinated. It's the emphasis. I have to get the emphasis right. <laughs> Isn't this beautiful? Hang on, let's see if we can look at that. Isn't that stunning? Really love this one. So beautiful. So if you chose that, then <laughs> you are in the right place. All right. Now, as with any of my readings, please take on board what resonates. Discard what doesn't and see what comes into your intuition as we go through the cards. So we've got beautiful Lord Krishna there, great souls. Wasn't he a great soul? <laughs> Absolutely. I'm sure all of his thousands of girlfriends would agree. <laughs> I don't know how many girlfriends he had. He had quite a few. Okay. Appreciation. Love that card. That is stunning. I'm remembering you, group three. You've got, I mean, it's an amazing spread, this one. Look at that. Bravery, oceans. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll say after I draw them all. There we go. I'll let, I'll let you see what pops into your mind. Okay, King of Wands, upright. Beautiful. And your other tarot cards, you've got the Empress in reverse. And I couldn't believe this. From a different deck, you got the Queen of Wands upright. So we've got I mean, the power couple of the universe right here. We've got the King of Wands and we've got the Queen of Wands upright. I mean, that's just... How often does that happen? Not often. That was incredible. I was blown away by that. And from my deck, my hand-drawn deck, we've got... Okay, Rahu in the 12th house. Cool. Yes, I remember you, group three. Oh, there we go. Can you see that? Yeah, I think so. Just made a mess though. Right, what have we got? We've got basically one of the best spreads I think I've ever drawn. I was so impressed by the energy here. Everything is sensational, everything is beautiful. Don't worry if you're not feeling like this, by the way. Don't worry if like your life around you is like chaotic and not happening. I mean, it could be chaotic. We've got Ketu in the sixth there. We'll get into it, but in terms of just the just the cards, just the energy, just what's here, absolutely phenomenal, stunning, beautiful, really, really impressed. And it, it as I contemplated these cards, it kind of took me down all kinds of nice tangents and places in my own mind, and and times that I remembered. And look at her; I mean, she's on top of the world, literally, right? bravery, oceans, but there's like, she's carefree. And there are these 
birds here and just wonderful right really beautiful carefree energy she's literally on top of the world oceans it's almost as if the, the chaos of these oceans it doesn't matter at all she's grounded the, this is stormy water all around her so there is some storminess there is some some chaos but she's got her feet firmly on the earth and her hands are relaxed and like it's just oh, such a great card right and then there was this appreciation I love this energy so much and this is what I enjoy doing myself very much through the master's series you know I take a person and I just appreciate them I'm just like okay who is this person why are they so amazing appreciation I think is one of the best energies in the world and I think it's one of the most underrated uh, and underappreciated <laughs> funny that um, then we've also got these great souls okay so I mean here we've got the Lord of Romance himself Krishna just having a lovely time music moonlight you know everybody's in love so let's have a, oh and that that is what I thought that that was one of the big things actually my, my first impression of this spread yes was that this feeling of in love it's here it's like you know I mean well you've got these two you've got the power couple right here so massive feeling of just being in love let's take a look at what's written here so the chapter is chapter 7 verse 19 I'll put a link to this below so if you want to read it you can it says after innumerable births and deaths those who are wise surrender unto me knowing me to be the cause of all causes and all that exists such great souls are very rare yeah I, I think this is it's hard to do <laughs> it's hard to really surrender absolutely everything to God but it's worth it you see and it's and I do think it takes um, it uh, yeah I think it does take a lot of spiritual work to, to get to what this is talking about but maybe some of you are there you know why not yes yeah, so I definitely got a sense of um, of being in love the only thing the only slight thing and well the other thing I got from this is so Rahu in the 12th now one of the things I've been thinking about with this 12th house I'm supposed to do an episode on it I just haven't had the time but I've got this thing about the 12th house and fantasy thinking and how that is actually a drain of energy that's a loss of energy fantasy thinking instead of burning our energy there we could be putting our energy into something very practical and building something real in the practical world but this card I believe is actually asking you to deliberately engage in some fantasy thinking specifically and look we've got the weekend coming up have a weekend take time off just luxuriate in these beautiful energies and we must come to the place where I talk about what if you are in chaos and you got, you, you're listening to all this and you go, I'm not feeling any of this. My life is chaos. What are you talking about? So you can transform it through these energies, through the energy of being in love, through the energy of appreciation, through some escapism. Really carve out some time, get into a bubble and just feel good. And the more that you feel good, the more you're going to manifest very easily what it is that you want because what do you want okay so what let, let's say you want a new car or you want a relationship let's take those two as an example a new car means you have a car okay so you technically don't need a new one <laughs> right and with have, you know meeting the love of your life or whatever it is that you for survival you technically don't need either you know um, and I'm trying to think of, you know, when, when you want something that you technically don't really need, why do you want it? And the answer is always the same. You want it because you think it's going to make you feel good. And it probably will for a while. But the problem with an external thing that you're getting those feel-good feelings from is that that can go away or that can crash or that can die or that can, you know what I mean? Like... You need to be able to generate these great feelings within you. 
And when you do that, when you generate the appreciation or that feeling of being in love, when you generate that within you, then good stuff just keeps coming in. And you don't have to work at it. You don't have to effort too much. Okay, because the reason you want the good stuff in life is because you think it'll make you feel good. So feel good first, and then you're going to attract all the great stuff. You know, I mean, that's, that's what Lord Krishna did. He was always feeling great, and he always attracted all the beautiful, wonderful things to him. I mean, it was effortless. He's a great example of, of, um, of this. You know, these two go together. Six is also the number of love in tarot. So this is very much a spread of just being in love. You know, three is a number of... Um, in tarot, it's kind of community, togetherness, social. It's creativity as well. It's a great number. So this is just all stunning. Now... The only card I haven't talked about is the Empress card being in reverse. So what's with that? This was interesting. I reflected on a time where this all got me to reflect on a time when I was incredibly very happy at one time. And I, I am pretty happy most of the time, but there was a time where I was particularly happy. And um, someone was coming from a great distance to, to be with me. Yes, it was a bit of a king and queen of wands situation. And... Um, I remember reading back on all the old messages that we had shared, which were also lovingly written. It was all wonderful. But I had this moment after I finished reading everything, I had this incredible moment of tapping into emptiness and the meaninglessness of everything. It was so weird because at that time I was spending quite a lot of time in just these, these energies here, basically. And... It was really great. But then at the same time, I could access a deep emptiness or meaninglessness, which I didn't stay in for too long, but I did feel it amongst all of this. And that is, that's natural. That's, it, it, you know, when I saw the presence of this, I kind of thought, yeah, this is so interesting because it's so real that when you have all this in love and all this wonderful stuff, at the same time you will be able to access possibly an emptiness or a meaninglessness of everything. And that's natural because this is the earth plane of duality. When you create one incredible extreme, you're creating, so you're creating both at the same time. So like you're in love, in love, in love here, and then here you're kind of like there's emptiness, meaninglessness, um, it's, it's kind of both, because your life becomes so rich with meaning uh, when you're in love and appreciation and all these wonderful things. And at the same time, the opposite is being created, weirdly. So it's okay. It's okay that she, you know, the Empress is there in reverse, perfectly fine. In fact, it makes this whole spread very real. Very, very real. So if you're in a chaotic time and you're, you're kind of going, well, hang on a minute, I'm not really feeling any of this, deliberately feel it. Try to, try to escape. Try to deliberately get into those feelings of being in love. Generate it and see what you magnetize, see what you attract in. You will be surprised. You will be amazed as to what comes in because you've got all this here for you. So it's just... It's, the energy is just there. It's just under the surface. Maybe some of you really are um, going through an absolutely wonderful time, and that's wonderful. We need more of that. We need more people going through a good time because that's going to help the entire collective. So let's see what song lyric comes through for you. All the readings have gone a bit longer this time. I tend to find that when I'm in the office, I go a bit longer. And then when I'm out and about somewhere... I'm probably a bit self-conscious when I'm out and about somewhere. Oh, how amazing. Wow, this is a beautiful song, Up Where We Belong. Let's get that in focus. The road is long. There are mountains in our way, but we climb a step every day. Up Where We Belong, Joe Cocker. This is a great song. And it's, the song is Love Lifts Us Up Where We Belong. 
okay that's exactly this song is exactly this spread that is incredible i'm blown away by that yeah this is great but interestingly this could have been a good lyric for group number one because there was a mountain in that group mountain picture mm. but the lyrics that are great for this spread are love lifts us up where we belong and that this is exactly where you belong you belong in these beautiful lofty energies up here and fantasy thinking there's nothing wrong with it engage in some do some because yeah i've been critical of it lately but we need it as well there is a need to to dream big and to enjoy the feelings of the dream allow yourself to do that allow yourself to you know yeah like do some window shopping on the internet or whatever it is you know i don't know whatever it is that you like but group number three thank you so much for pulling these cards through they are absolutely brilliant let me know in the comments below how you got on and I look forward to seeing you next time.